You thought I was gonna say underpants. You might have thought I stepped on a kitten or something. Are we on? We're on. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. I'm back. You're back. Welcome back. And I'm stirring up a hot cup of coffee today uh, in a teacup that's obviously jadeite. Mm-hmm. So it's a little more decorative than, well, I guess I could show you that. A little more decorative than just the plain old uh, Jane Ray cup and saucer. Well, let me just sit back here for a little hot minute and get caught up. Oh my goodness, how are you? How, ooh, okay. What's gonna happen in today's video? Well, this is just gonna be a chit chat and I have things to show you. Now, I told you I was on um, vacation. I was only gone for a few days and, um, but I did head south uh, I saw an old friend in uh, the nation's capital and was there for one night, and then I saw several friends in the state of North Carolina, including my old college roommate who I was able to spend some time with, and we went shopping together, and uh, I had some things for him, he had some things for me. I'll show you uh, a few of the things that he gave me. I can't show you what I gave him because I didn't take pictures of it. And then I visited some other old friends uh, in North Carolina, and then zipped right back up here to New Jersey and Philadelphia. Um, and what I'm going to do in today's video is show you all of the things that I found. Uh, now, not everything came from my trip. In fact, a lot of it came from just before I went on, headed south, and after I got back. So there's really only a few things that I, that I bought while I was on the road. And I'm going to show you those, and uh, I don't really think any of it is for sale. There's one item here that I am going to go ahead and try to get listed ASAP, because it would really be good for Halloween decorating, but I suppose since Halloween is about seven days away, it's kind of too late for that. But I want to thank you for joining me, and let me get that off my screen, and we'll have a, a sip of this. I hope you're enjoying something hot today, if it's chilly where you are. Mm. I don't know, but hot coffee always tastes good in a good old Fire King Jadeite cup. Okay, here are some things that I found uh, in my area. This came from a thrift shop in a Jersey, and I just got it yesterday. It's big. Wow, there is a beautiful Johnson Brothers turkey platter. And it says on the back... His Majesty, made by, made in England by Johnson Brothers, and a genuine hand engraved, all decorated under the glaze, detergent and acid resisting colors, patent pending. Now notice it doesn't say anything about dishwasher. I don't think this is necessarily that old. They were still making stuff like this in the 70s and 80s. And I don't know when dishwasher resistant was printed on English uh, porcelain or china. Uh, so I don't know, this could be 1950s, 60s, could be the 70s or 80s. Uh, the colors are beautiful. We love our Johnson Brothers, do we not? And this bad boy is huge, in perfect condition. And I paid $12 for it. Turkey platters uh, here in America are certainly not rare. Uh, and I think we all know the reason for that. I've never cooked a turkey in my life. <laughs> but one of these days I will make a turkey and I'll need a turkey platter. But in the meantime, wouldn't this be great propped up on a sideboard uh, or some such thing as decoration? It is big! I actually would consider selling it, but can you imagine shipping that? Thanks for watching my shipping video yesterday. I enjoyed putting that together. I hope it wasn't too boring or too long. Okay, 
get the big stuff out of the way. While I was in North Carolina, I did find a glass caddy, as you can see here, which has a real kind of neat 1940s look to it. And when I got home, my Hazel Atlas Ritz Blue fits perfect, perfectly uh, in there. Now, <laughs> I only have one. I had two and I broke one. And so now I'll spend the rest of my life looking for uh, the other seven, which I think would look really good in here. And I'm not going to go on eBay and just buy them. That would be cheating. I'm going to uh, see if I can find them in the wild and how long that will take me. So this little drinks caddy here was at an antique store down in North Carolina. And I actually paid about $12 for this because I'm keeping it. I don't have one. And I wanted one that had kind of a deco look to it. It's made out of metal. Oh, we were going to play what the heck is that. So let's go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to show you an item. I'm going to say what the heck is that. And you're going to either know right away or you're going to ponder. But I'm not going to make you wait until the next video because I'll probably forget to do it. I'm going to tell you at the end of this video what it is. So... You can guess in the comments if you want, but you're getting the answer when this video is over. What the heck is it? Or what in the heck is that? Now, some of you already know. And you knew as soon as I lifted it up. Well, that looks like a shower head on the top of that elephant trunk. And there's nothing on the bottom. I'm not sure who made him. He's looking something like a Shawnee piece. I don't know. He's not marked. It doesn't matter. But what is he? Okay, that little spout comes out, and he's hollow on the inside. So, are we shaking elephant-flavored cinnamon on our toast? I don't know. I'm going to tell you in a minute. I have a feeling most of you already know what it is. Okay, next thing I bought for myself, the... Elephant shake, oops, yes, elephant shaker, I almost told you what it was for. That came from a flea market yesterday here in Pennsylvania. This I bought in North Carolina at a little junk shop. Uh, it's an industrial sort of light bulb cage. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm not going to clean it. I'm not going to wash it. I want all of that gritty industrial oxidation left right on there. Mm hmm and I'll be putting an Edison style light bulb in here and an old-fashioned cord and that's gonna hang somewhere I remember when I was little I'm pretty certain it was at my great-grandparents house I was scared to death to use the bathroom at my great-grandparents house because it was one of those old houses that when it got indoor plumbing you know it didn't have bathrooms especially down downstairs but they would put like a toilet in in like a pantry and so off the kitchen what was probably a, like a little pantry of some sort there was a toilet and a sink in there and this one little light bulb sort of hung down from the ceiling and there were no windows in there I don't remember it having a cage on it like this but I always think of one of those awful old light bulbs that just sort of hung down it was very creepy uh, what am I going to do with this? Okay. Ooh. Speaking of light bulbs, this came from the flea market yesterday. I like these old-fashioned trade cards. Now, it's not a postcard. You don't mail it. But we see here Mazda lamps. And this is at a time when light bulb isn't quite standard yet. We haven't really decided... Are they light bulbs? Are they lamps? And so an old-fashioned term, and I think maybe in England you call them lamps. Uh, the word gramophone stuck in England, where in America the word phonograph took root. And I think the English say, I may be wrong on that. Um, but we say pretty much standard light bulbs. But at this time, people were saying lamps, and we can see the old-fashioned... Um, carbon lamp there that only puts out a certain amount of light and the new 
uh, Mazda light bulb here puts out much more light. And it says here, we sell them at Wooden Lamborn in Anvil, uh, Avondale, Pennsylvania. Avondale is a little town not too far from here in Pennsylvania. That's just uh, a little bit of advertising there. And I love old industrial things and light bulbs and whatnot. And that's the kind of a light bulb right there that I'm going to be hanging from that cage, whatever I did with it. Uh, here's a piece of amethyst glass, which I don't, ha well, <laughs> which I don't have, which I do have now, but I did not have it before. What do you think, David, in Texas? I think David has this one. I'm a fan of black glass, black glass, amethyst glass. Uh, some of it does really look amethyst, and some is very difficult to see through, and you can't really tell that it's amethyst glass, but this one has the silver. This one actually looks really, will look really well with that orb. See that right there with the snake plant in it? I know some of you call that mother-in-law's tongue, that plant right there. That's black glass uh, with a silver, does it have a silver stripe? Yeah, it's got stripes around it as well. And uh, this I found in North Carolina while I was with my former college roommate. We were at a store down there somewhere and I was able to buy that. And then here in Philadelphia, before I left town, uh, I found an amber bowl in the wonderful Ellie Smith pattern called By Cracky. Remember, I just was showing you plates. I have plates in uranium green. I have plates in Vaseline yellow. Uh, and But I've never found the berry bowl. I have sherbets and whatnot. I really like this pattern. I don't know why. And I'll collect it in any color. It's going to date to the very late 20s. And since we already talked a lot about the cra this crackle uh, pattern on this glass, I won't repeat myself. So uh, a small, really could, use, could be used for candy as well, not just uh, as a berry bowl. So speaking of that, let's compare the size. This thing right here is really the size of a console bowl, whereas this is more um, when, you, when bowl sets were sold as a master berry bowl with sherbets, they were more on the line of this particular size. This big thing is really a console bowl size. Um, I have matching plates. Now, let's kind of process that for a minute. And I'll tell you how I received it. Well, let me show you the plates first if I can get my hands on them without. So here are the, I've got five plates and they're little sort of dessert sandwich size plates. They do have the ring there in the center which can accommodate a sherbet. And they did, the stretch class companies that made this type of glass, you could get sherbets on a stem with a foot and it would fit right down in that indentation there. So these double as under plates you thought I was going to say underpants. Uh, or they can also be under, they can also be the uh, dessert plates. Uh, and so they're, you know, they're little six inch plates. But this bowl is, as I said, is much more of the console bowl size rather than Master Berry. So I don't know if the person who had these had just a whole collection of this uh, color, partic particular color of stretch glass. You could easily use this as a master berry bowl uh, with plates and sherbets or as a center bowl, a console bowl with the two candlesticks. Now some of you may say, well what about salad? Well this bowl, this, this set is going to date to oh, 1915 to 1930 and it wasn't such a common practice in those days to put big bowls of salads out on tables the way we do today. People did eat salads, but they weren't necessarily served in big bowls such as this. Okay, where did all this come from? Well, my former college roommate gave it to me. We give things to each other. I save things for him, he saves things for me. Some of the things we like and we fight over, 
And when I saw him last week, I hadn't seen him in like 20 years, 25 years. It's been a while, quite a while. But he uh, said, here, you like this stuff. And I do like this stuff. And he was happy to give it to me. Uh, it's stretch glass, as you can see. Let's just put this down because it is heavy and I don't want to break it. I've talked about stretch glass before. Who made it, when it was popular, uh, how they did the stretch effect. Let's not go into it now, but maybe I'll do a second video showing you the different close-up pieces. And here's the difference between stretch and carnival. And this is who made it and kind of how they got this effect on it. I'll do that again sometime, but I don't want this video to be to take up your whole evening. I gave him the most hideous lamp. I was shopping somewhere and he was watching me. And I said, ugh, ugh, that hideous lamp. So he, t he sent me a text message, go back and get that lamp. I don't want that lamp, well I do want it. I said, okay, well that figures. So I went back and I bought that hideous lamp and it's been sitting in my mother's basement for eight months waiting for me to get it to him and I couldn't wait to get it out of the house. We enjoy insulting each other's tastes, taste? <laughs> And we don't get bent out of shape about it. People are so sensitive. Maybe we don't get bent out of shape because we're friends and we know each other. I don't know, but uh, he will easily say to me, "Ugh, you know that nasty pattern of carnival of of uh, amber glass that you have is so ugly it would make the food taste bad." Uh, and I don't get bent out of shape about that. I think we. I'll tell you, it's like doing a YouTube thing like this, you learn just how sensitive people are. <laughs> and if you're overly sensitive, start a YouTube channel. That will cure you of it. I can tell you that. Because um, sometimes people really blow up about just trivial things. I remember one time I was in a shop and I said, oh, I don't like... I don't particularly care for longer burger baskets. Oh my goodness, four or five of the longer burger basket people came out of the woodwork and bleh, bleh, bleh. you might have thought I stepped on a kitten or something. <laughs> I just don't buy and sell longer burger baskets. But they had a fit. And I think it's wonderful when we can say, oh my gosh, I can't stand that milk glass. Or Scott, I don't know, that green console set that you have over there on, on your mantle pleat piece? Woo! Well, well, I hope it just like falls off and smashes. Now we don't have to be like overly sarcastic about it, but isn't it a good thing that we don't all like the same thing? I mean, if we all like the same stuff, there wouldn't be enough of it to go around. Oh, I guess I'm kind of getting off on a soapbox and I didn't mean to do that. I really don't get offended at all. <laughs> I don't. Uh, but I have to be careful because sometimes people really are sensitive about things. You know. Anyway, enough about all that. Should I edit all of that out? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Look at this. That is Art Deco. It is an ashtray. Look at the deco top on there, and it says slide top, patent applied for on the bottom. It's got these little legs, and after you put your ashes in there, you slide it off and dump them out. Uh, I didn't throw a black light on this. Undoubtedly, it's going to glow. I'm keeping this little thing, I think. I don't smoke, but that'll be cool on my desk with paper clips and whatnot. You can rest your pen on there or paintbrushes or lipstick tubes or I don't know whatever you want to do with it stick things down in there little whatnots put my ring in there at the end of the day Isn't that cool I've never seen it before and it has that deco feel to it you know I like deco these I have not even had a chance to look up these are deco as well I don't know if these were used on the Pennsylvania Railroad in the drinking car in the bar on the on, on the train or if Libby made these and just sold them as um, interesting little sort of 
liquor glasses. Now it's not liquor. Let me get over here so you can see the graphic a little bit better. Uh, what is this on the rocks? Anyway, we can see the Pennsylvania Railroad starts here in Wash in our nation's capital. We see that. And then in Art Deco fashion, it gets larger as we go around. And there's Manhattan. You see? You can't see. And then we keep going. I don't know why we skip Baltimore and Philadelphia. I guess you couldn't get everybody on here. And then it appears as though they're showing us the train terminates in Boston. You see it? I know. I need to stick paper in there. But uh, I have two of these uh, really deco in style, the way the... The cityscape is, can be seen and how the train uh, zips and, and, and increases in size as it goes around. Very streamlined, modern. And the graphics on here are beginning to turn that sort of dirty white color. Very similar to if you collect the sailboat glasses or the Sportsman series by Hazel Atlas. You know how the white graphic can start to turn brown. And those things were made in the late 30s and into the 40s. So I'm going to have to try to figure out if these were used on the train. There's a lot of wear on the bottom of these. These have been sliding around a bar. You can't see it, but there's quite a bit of wear. So two of these, Pennsylvania Railroad. What time is it? <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Speed it up. This is the one piece. Oh, 22 minutes. This is the one piece I am going to get listed, and I do want to sell it. It's a beautiful satin glass basket. Could be Tiffin. Tiffin did make a lot of this satin glass, and it is, as I've said before, smooth as a kitten's ear. And I know a lot of you at Halloween like to decorate with a macabre style. You could put dead branches in there or skeleton uh, extremities you know sticking out yeah I'm gonna try to get that listed there's no damage on it I bought a cocktail set which I'm keeping because I collect this chrome stuff here's the cocktail shaker nothing terribly exciting about it there's no chrome there's no Bakelite on here uh, it's sort of deco in, 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 a, in a way but what's wonderful is I had all six original matching cups with it, and you can see that the lines on there are repeated in the actual shaker itself. So all of this went together. So one shaker and six of these, oftentimes there were trays when they were new. And then yesterday morning at the flea market, I bought four of these black glass pedestals. I love them. That one, I think, is a Tiffin base. The others, I th and I think this might be Tiffin as well. This is a smaller one. And then these two, I believe, are Fenton in, in style. Okay, and so these were sold, and you would put fancy art glass vases and whatnot on top, and it really ele uh, elevates the vase and makes it seem a little more elegant. And I don't have, this isn't really going to uh, do the trick because it's black glass on black glass, but that's nice. That's even better. Yeah? Yes. All right, so I got four of those and it was $10 for the four of them. What a steal. All right, one more thing to show you. We're gonna be done in no longer than 30 minutes. One more thing to show you, and then the, what in the heck is it? Look at this. This I bought in North Carolina, and you know I'm keeping it. Wow, it's an enamelware coffee pot, but why does it have a glass top on it? You say, aha, it's a percolator. Well, spin it around. Where do you plug in the electric cord? There's no place to plug in the electric cord. Is it a stovetop percolator? Well, I'll tell you what I think. Let's first look at what's missing. Ah, the stem in the basket. Okay, I have some stems and some baskets. I'm gonna have to find one that fits down in here. They're all different sizes. May take me a while, but I will find a stem and a basket to fit down in there. There's the glass top. We can see that the metal on the bottom in an electric percolator would go down into the heating element uh, filament down under there. 
a element. But this is sitting on this metal piece, which is actually permanently attached to the bottom of this enamel pot. This is too small to actually fit on a stove burner. Even the smallest burner on a stove would be way too big. So my guess is that when this was sold, it might have had a small accompanying electric hot plate that would accommodate the circumference of this metal circle right here. Now, that's not just a guess. I have seen, made by, I want to say Sunbeam, they, they also did a chrome version in an Art Deco style, and it had its own hot plate burner that was sold with the set. And it was very much in style for um, the lady of the house to prepare breakfast at the breakfast table. Even here in the United States, it was people did that in the 20s and 30s when homes were uh, electrified. It was the one meal that was, it was really accepted to actually prepare it at the table. And, you know, if you had domestics, maybe they didn't actually cook it or they might have assisted, but the lady of the house would make the coffee and the waffles. Waffles were a big deal and the pancakes and there's all of this wonderful, um, very modern for the, for the day, uh, appliances, very decorative to be actually used at the table. I think this was probably used at the breakfast table and this probably sat down again on some type of a burner. Just my guess. I could be completely wrong and have no idea what I'm talking about. But look at how it's embossed around here. It's in excellent condition. Um, I have a small burner. I'm actually going to experiment with this as soon as I can find a basket. Because the heat, will this will become hot. It will rise up inside and it will cause that coffee to percolate. And then you're all set. There's no mark on it. I do not know who made it. But I paid $19 for it at an antique store while I was in North Carolina. And it's just my favorite depression green color. You knew that in the old days before, steam irons had the push button steam function. Your granny put water inside of this, or water if you're born anywhere outside of the New Jersey area. Granny put water in here and she would sprinkle it on the clothing while she was ironing. So it's a laundry sprinkler. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you knew that. Now who made it? Shawnee? I don't know. It just kind of looks like Shawnee, but maybe somebody else made it. This will be for sale in the old curiosity shop, but it's not listed yet. This will be too. These are the only two things out of this whole batch that I think I'm going to sell. Well, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this little thrift haul and that I didn't ramble too much, you know, about that, you know, being overly sensitive about stuff. I enjoy all of your comments and I just laugh at, and enjoy uh, that, that you are comfortable enough to laugh and enjoy with me with the comments that you leave. And uh, that's going to do it. Okay, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying... Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Wait for the cat. So long for now.